Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Well, hello and welcome to Watch What Crappens, the podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on Yield Bravs. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How's it going? Good. So, guys, it's a different day for us here. We are in Amazon Wondery Studios, the glamorous. Uh, we were here for a meeting and ended up uh, just asking them if we could use one of their booths. And it's really cool. It's very fancy. Now, if mm-hmm. you're watching this on Crappens On Demand video, which we do every day on our Patreon, go check it out on patreon.com slash watch the Crappens. You will see one of the worst angles on my face. This is why I don't love people being below me when we're making love because <laughs> it's not my best look but guess what we're doing it anyway we don't care so. I, you know what in fact i'm gonna get a reminder right now to get another uh thing to hoist up to put a camera on top of for the next time we do this i want so, i want i want like a clothespin for the back of my neck look pull it back like like an old lady star pull up pull back like my cat. waddle no there's yeah. no you can't have um, a, waddle, a waddle on the back of your neck but if That's anybody tough. wants to know what i look like on top of you this is <laughs> this is it it's terrifying which is why i'm single okay. so anyway welcome to the show <laughs> this is handsome <laughs> as ever was that sexual harassment by the way yes and i'm gonna sue you i um yes. not you the audience i was just like picture me on top of you i think that's well, pretty fucking disgusting had, especially being at work well we just had a work we so we had a wonderful lunch with the people of wondery they're so awesome and apparently my top button was completely open and so i just had my chest out then torn it up lunch i didn't realize until we got here onto crap is on demand and i was yeah. like why is my entire chest out and you're like yeah you were going sexy at lunch i was like that was definitely not the intent i'm wearing gag Today, Ben, you were going. You were. This is your confessional (laughs) luck. It was your housewives confession. I was doing it like I was on vacation. But anyway, today is a super important day because it is the premiere of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City season five. You know, a lot of anticipation, a lot of hype coming into the season after last season was so wild, so crazy. We have been obviously um, recapping the secret lives of Mormon wives. So. You know, if you need more of your Mormon and Utah fix, be sure to check out those recaps. They're on our feed. They're really fun. But, you know, nothing compares to the OG wives. Okay. We like those 20 something wives, but we love our 40 something wives. Yeah. The 20 something wives are just like dumb new wine. Yeah. You know, their boxes of Franzia. You need to really let that wine take nice long shrivelly back you need that wine to turn into vinegar and then you got a house yeah, okay house that's what you, you need that let that if you need that wine to aerate and then disintegrate and, and then it's not an age shit. thing it's a maturity thing it's a life yeah. experience it's about seasoning thing yeah it's about seasoning it's about marination guys let's marinate <laughs> mary m cosby a nation <laughs> Let's marry M. Cosby and Nate, our housewives. Guys, it's Salt Lake City. We're going to be Looney Tunes because it's late in the afternoon. We it's actually had lunch. Fifth coffee of the day. Ben's cracked out and slutty today on coffee. I'm talking about being on <laughs> top co- of you at the I'm, opening of the show. I'm I'm coffee slutty today. <laughs> yeah. So, and also they made us a cappuccino with our logo on it. Today. I know. It that's... was on the foam. Our cappuccino with our logo on the foam. So we're like really full of our <laughs> own selves right now. So let's do this Salt Lake City Looney Tunes episode. Love episode it. one of season five. It's called Besos. I'm calling it Besos a mi culo because <laughs> that means kisses kisses on my ass. Well, it is appropriate that we are uh, we are recording this in the house of Bezos. That's true. <laughs> wow. Bezos, Bezos from Bezos, everyone. We yeah. are, we're literally in the heart of That's Amazon crazy. Right you now. can't plan on that, right? We are literally in Amazon. You guys, they have their <laughs> own machine here that prints Beyonce sweatshirts. <laughs> they just showed us this room. And they're like, guys, oh, this is just merch. It's not that big of a deal. I'm like, you have a whole Beyonce table? They're like, yeah. And you don't even, you, you can just order it on demand. It's like special Beyonce merch that you can't Bruh. even get at the concert. Seriously. Listen, Mormonism, I was like, Joseph who? Joseph Smith? I don't want, I'm not going to follow a Smith. That's like the most basic fucking name I've ever heard. If Joseph Smith had a Beyonce table, I'd follow his uh, ass. If, if, if Joseph if, Smith was like, guess what? If he if had a visual follow, album. <laughs> if you follow my religion, you can have a Beyonce sweatshirt at the snap of a finger. I'd be so Mormonized. Now, let me tell you something. One thing about Joseph Smith is I do not believe he would ever have hot sauce in his bag. <laughs> That's one thing I just don't trust he has. Are you talking about Hillary Clinton? I'm talking about Joseph Smith. I'm just talking about just how white he is. <laughs> yeah, but, but who has hot sauce in their bag? What Beyonce are you referencing? has, oh, geez. She does? The, the lyric, I've got hot sauce. You know from Lemonade? 
No, I don't listen to the lyrics because Jay Z cheated on her. And your Beyonce is. But I was thinking of Hillary Clinton because that's remember when she was like, "I love hot sauce." Yo soy mexicana. I love hot sauce. Bezos. She pulled that. <laughs> pulled that. Okay. So Bezos. she's like, "I'm in the Bronx. I love Mexican food." Everyone's like, "Oh my god, you're so awkward." Okay, so um. We're rolling. Okay, so we're do. It's a very dramatic season because it's all like city, dun, dun, dun. and they're doing it very new style. We're seeing everybody sit down for their confessionals for the first time, and we see them sitting in front of a green screen and getting yeah. mic'd up. It's very TV it's be raw. movies, Hollywood, Bezos, Bezos, Bezos. This is like a same day delivery episode. It's like one of those things. Like I want my Real Housewives, and guess what? By seven p.m., it's already here. Let me tell you what eBay could never, never, yes, Bezos. Don't even try it. Steve. Yeah. Um. So, uh, this intro is hilarious because there's gonna be a lot of like voiceover that we're gonna get to. But you know, Vanderpump Rules, they had a video, uh, that went along with their last season that was kind of like a making of the opening credits. You know, and they showed that what happened was they had people sitting at like the bars in Tom Tom, etc., and they had a drone that went flying into the restaurant. And so for the opening credits, they sped it up. So it was like SLC was like, let's do that, but let's have the drone go really far. So we have to speed it up really fast. <laughs> and like this entire first minute is like drone overdrive fast forward footage. It's like house, house, murder in a bath, Whitney. It was wild. Yeah, it was some crazy drone footage. Um, so it was very dramatic. The drone pause, made that ha, noise. Ha, 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 he, ha, 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 he, ha, he, ha. It was like very survivor coded pause to start off. Yeah. And then we hear Heather, who's like the lead. She's her voiceover. She's like, you know, signing up to be part of a television show, part of your life is expensive. Posed. Also, dun, when you dun, write a book about your dun, two books dun, about your dun. life, too, that will do it too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So your life is exposed. You know, every day we choose to share what what most what most people choose to hide. And then we wait for the world's opinion. It's horrifying. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, I have to make a PSA right now, mm. which is that um about two months ago. I read on the internet on a website that shall be unnamed, but it, r it rhymes with edit, that um, apparently someone does not like it when I do Trixie monoclacal choir. And apparently every time I go, ha, 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 it drives them nuts. But unfortunately, Too bad. I have a higher calling. Okay. And when one is in Utah, one connects with higher calling. So to that, I say, ha, you know what? I don't like taxes. Still got to pay them. <laughs> no one cares that I don't like it. Okay. They're there. It's a fact of life. Haws on this show are a fact of life. Okay? Yeah, it's, it's just part of it. It's part of the experience. So um, then we see the drone. This is where the drone footage starts. And it's hilarious because it's <laughs> flying through homes in Salt Lake City. Like they're like the Taj Mahal. It's like your first look inside the Taj Mahal. It's, when, <laughs> it's fucking Whitney's house. You know, it's like Whitney's <sighs> new farmhouse. Modern farmhouse that looks just like the other modern farm. It's just in a bigger row of farmhouses. Yeah. So it flies through her like basic white oaked home, and she's like, "We tell our deepest, darkest secrets." <laughs> yeah, I don't think like watching you slather Justin in Hershey syrup is counts as a dark secret. It just counts as trauma for the rest of us. I like jewelry. <laughs> it's a deep dark secret. Uh, and then it flies over to Angie Kay's house, <laughs> their big echoey house, which is apparently on the market. And she goes, we share our marriages, the good and the bad, and our daughter's Electra, and we also share baklava. I'm Greek. <laughs> and then um, the drone goes through Meredith's house and, of course, goes straight to the bathtub. And Meredith, I don't know, I feel like Meredith shouldn't be seen on drones. Meredith isn't really the kind of... Uh, personality for drones because she needs to know where her angle is she can't just have a flying thing around her head because she's in the bathtub and she's just like me taking a bath it's like what are you trying to catch the drone you can't catch the drone meredith just relax in the bath <laughs> i love bath Where's the is that a camera get it? Bronx. <laughs> if there was anyone on Bravo who I suspected hates drones, it would be Meredith. Well, there, we never had a conversation one way or another. <laughs> if a little small batteries not included robot come flying into my bathroom, and quite frankly, it's a violation. 
We make mistakes and we have to live with them. That's her line. I'm we also that. make a white bean salad occasionally with the help of the entire family holding a lemon. So I like that they are all like doing what we know them to do. You know, Meredith is in the bath. Whitney's in a white oak tome. Um, Lisa is drinking big gulps with John, which is classic. Like, That's my thing. I just wanted drones to come around and watch us drink bad cops. And I'm going to mention this now because I feel like I'm going to forget by the time we get to the very end of the episode. But when it comes time for the ending credits, the very first ending credit that comes up before executive producer, before anything, the first thing it says on the screen is Lisa Barlow has a paid partnership with Wendy's. <laughs> I was like, wait, <laughs> before you find out who's actually made this show, Lisa Barlow has <laughs> Wendy's. <laughs> I, was like, I love that they had to put that legally into the credits. Like, don't worry. She everybody. does too. She's like a Wendy's rock star. When I went to BravoCon, she had like a Wendy's booth. I mean, I don't know. It was like at 315, come see Lisa Barlow at the Wendy's the Wendy's exhibit. <laughs> and I tried to go and it was literally too many people. And I went and everyone's like mobbing Lisa. And she's like, I love strawberry frosties. <laughs> They're so good. And people were acting time. like the Beatles were there. It's like some skinny bitch drinking a fucking uh, frosty. I mean, sorry to say the B word, but. You know what? Our secrets, we hold dearest. They're on display. And then we hear Heather say, so when the world pushes back, we pull together. I was like, yes, this group of women pulling together. Yes, I, I fully believe that. Yeah. Um, and Whitney's like, and then so, there's sometimes, um, sometimes we build a circle of trust, but then sometimes circles line. <laughs> turn, it? turn. Circles turn on you back. But aren't circles always turning? Because if they weren't turning, wouldn't they be squares? <laughs> but look at us. Oh, and then we see a clip of Heather going, but look at us. We've not solved any problems. We're still trying to find receipts. We're still trying to poke holes in each other's timelines. We're still trying to... Oh, my God. Is she going to do fucking karaoke of her greatest <laughs> hits from last season, the whole season? She's going uh... to. She's fucking... How many times are we going to hear receipts proof timeline this season? 20 <laughs> times. Now, listen, I love the album. I love the album. I'll be I'll be telling my kids this is the Beatles <laughs> and I'll be playing that in the car. But girl. So when we disappoint each other, we go back to where we've started. We see what connects us and pray that it won't happen again unless it brings us really good ratings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're at this like barn oh my place. God, this music. The music to start off this scene was so lit. And I don't say lit often, but it was like. No, no, it was that song. They really got uncomfortable with that ha sound on the keyboard. I mean, whoever's doing that has been taking the YouTube piano classes. They're like, like they need to release an album. That song was so good. You know, I've I've talked. I learned it. Good. Season one that had that song, yeah, 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 yeah. which was a, a, a mm -hmm. classic that they stopped playing. Na, and they, na, 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 this na, song, na, na, na. this na, na, na. like, da, na, no, they na, play da, it da, sometimes. That sometimes, too. but I'm telling you, this song, oof, this they was up their game. They oof, it. I, I'm sorry, I did not preload it so I can play it because it's just, it's just, it's just beautiful. I'm actually glad that you brought it up because once you did it, it came back flooding into my head and it was so a, good. Because it's a masterpiece. Yeah. <laughs> and then once again, it was just like last night when I was watching this in my underwear, just like doing belly dances to the song. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm resisting the temptation to look it up right now. Do no one's going to want that. Okay, so then um, we see this barn type place and a bunch of horses outside. We're at the Blue Sky Ranch, guys. And yeah. they're really going heavy on the Whoosh. Now we're at a barn. Look, it's a it's a horse. Whoosh. Now it's another horse. Whoosh. Now it's a barn. Whoosh. Now it's a tree. I was like, okay, okay, with their drone whooshing. It's like the Fox News. Whoosh. And coming up, Trump gets mad in Chicago and calls Whoosh. somebody fat, a fat immigrant. Whoosh. So Lisa gets out of the SUV and she's got her sister-in-law Kim. And they're so this. What was funny about this episode? So the whole episode takes place at this part, the Bezos party. But we have lots of flashbacks that we're obviously going to talk about. But 
everyone seems to arrive with a person. And to me, this kind of felt like some sort of conclave where it's like every cast member gets to bring a nominee to be a friend of. You know, yeah, it, feel like everyone, it felt like everyone brought someone. And it's like, who gets to go forward? It is an open call. <laughs> and that's the thing we love about this show. It's a constant open call because they don't have a ton of people who probably can do this religiously or whatever. But they every year they have auditions. And it, this is the big community it's, theater. It's like Hunger Games. And they bring new girls on to try out every year. And there were some of them that you could tell that the producers were like we like her you know like we mm -hmm. like this lady um there was a black woman that yes, they showed she got in a every lot. scene and and they showed her reactions to things like being like uh-uh no way but then they never <laughs> i don't think she had any lines. She, i don't think she even got a chiron but she was like she made a splash i, I was like oh this is gonna be our new friend of but then it wound up being this random lady uh who i guess we'll get to i don't even remember her name but maylee or maylee kaylee well, i don't think of, they ever said her name she was sort of like somewhere between. She was like like an amalgamation of about six different housewives. All she was together. Claudia Jordan is who I saw. I saw Ramona in her face. Ramona, yes. Miley, Miley, Miley. Oh no, not Miley. Not a Miley. The not Whitney's Miley. friends. No, I'm talking about. Um, I saw Claudia Jordan in her gorgeous. No, not her. Definitely not her. I'm talking about. She's a stunner. You know, we'll get to her. We'll get the Brittany. other person. Was her name Brittany? The one who sat the down. The one who's like, oh, your costumes. Yes. Yeah, that was Brittany. <laughs> she's like, I'm fucking Donny Osmond. She was like Carly. She you was know, like Carly Simon. Meets, made. She was Carly Simon meets Ramona Singer. Um, yeah, she was a lot of different people. Um, all terrifying, by the way. Yes. <laughs> Terrified of every person she was. Okay, so uh Lisa is with Kim, her sister-in-law. And Lisa's like, oh my god, I can't wait to show you everything. Look, it's a horse. Horse. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Jack? Where's Henry? Um, uh, then we see a mullet, I guess. And then so you know how Kyle start stopped using her big guy party planner. Yeah, I think he just moved. It's the fat burger guy moved to Salt Lake City. It's him, but now he has a mullet, and he's uh -huh. Lisa's. And Lisa's oh, like, yeah. you remember? Yeah, yeah. And Lisa's like, I think we need to fix some things. You know what? I don't like the sponge. Why is it sponge here? You're going back to Kyle's house if you don't fix that. Can fix we move that. this high top? Thank you. Hi, Hi. Can we know that? Hi. Thank you. Sundance Queen. Sundance. So then um <laughs> and then Lisa's telling us there was so much turmoil with my friends. It wasn't the first time we've gone through it, but it was the worst time. And it brings us so close. I just love being in a space where I have friends I can count on and I can trust. So this Valentine's Day around the corner, I have the chance to throw my own version of Valentine's, which are called Bezos. I would have called it Galentine's, except that other Mormon show is doing a Galentine's Day episode this week. So we did Bezos. Yeah, and how do you do that? You could get two bad Mormon people. <laughs> doing galentines now you know that this is a valentine's bezos day because i got a sign that says bezos in helvetica font <laughs> bezos it just says bezos and that's they it. didn't want me to do another vita party so i just said do something in mexican <laughs> i thought it said being bsos and i was like oh my god it is an emergency they said no it's bezos but you know what if i added one more O, oh, i would be celebrating whitney be so so <laughs> am i right <laughs> but yeah they're playing opera it's the most dramatic season ever i mean ev literally everything they're doing is like dripping in drama it's like <laughs> that was turmoil with my friends <laughs> turmoil i'm telling you so then two weeks earlier we flash back wait wait well more importantly the motif here is because she says, you can give little kisses to all my girlfriends to remind them that I love them some more than others. Some, some more, more than, than others. others. Some, some more, more than, than others. others. Some, some more than others. Ah, oh, going into the past. Flashback. Well, wow, flashback so far. I'm with Jock in Colombia. Some more than others. Some more than others. Two weeks earlier, Lisa and Heather and Angie are in a park. And here's the music we need for it. <laughs> I'm having a Bezos party. Guess what? It's going to be all girls and no boys. Some more than others. Some more than others. <laughs> I'm inviting Botnay. I was on the fence because she did this podcast and she was rude to me. Guess what she said? She said, I'm the new felon. Can you believe that? And then who would have thought Nick Bile, he is at the, he is at the crux of the season opening controversy so it's on his so, podcast so. and he's like so can you say you've ever heard elisa apologize without being dismissive it's like um i can't say that i have she doesn't care about anything except being fine <laughs> right 
Lisa. Lisa's always been the villain. So I thought it was funny that Lisa misunderstood that to be Lisa's the new villain. She's not saying you're the new villain. She's saying you've always been an <laughs> asshole, <laughs> which I actually kind of respect coming from Whitney a little bit more. And also, uh, you got to love Nick Vile saying, <laughs> Has Lisa ever even apologized about being dismissive? <laughs> he says as dismissive, like one of the most dismissive people on as the As someone planet. who's been dismissed by Nick Vile, that's, this really speaks to me. <laughs> like literally personally <laughs> dismissed. So um, now, and then it's like, some more than others, some more than others. Some more than others. I hate it. Then you see Lisa Barlow arranging her Vita tequila bottles. Gosh, she goes, I hate, I hate anything with angles. I don't like angles. Angles stop. Angles your bottle is an angle. It's a giant angle. It's literally like a bottle with a, with a bisection to make it look angled. I'm so sorry if people are having trouble finding the location, but I wanted to put a map with no angles on it. Remember the first time I told you about angles? I had angles. 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 <laughs> so Angie's like, uh, Angie's coming in with uh, Whitney, I think. And so she's like, how are you going to be when she walks into your, oh wait, I don't know. Some someone's asking Lisa, "How are you going to be when she walks into your party?" And Lisa's like, "Well, we're all friends. I don't know that if Whitney's going to want to come, but you know what? I'm going to need a minute with Whitney because I'm mad at Whitney." <laughs> Back to present. Oh, this is the angles thing. So now, um, now people people are arriving. They're just assembling in this like patio, this snowy patio. Everyone can't wait to go inside, but they're not allowed to go inside yet. And Mary's coming in that spray paint jacket. Do you remember when Melania? Melania Trump wore that thing that like, I don't care. They went to the border to like visit abused children or something on the children. border. They're like, let's visit human trafficking victims on the border of El Paso. And Melania shows up in a shirt and a jacket and on the back spray painted. I don't care. I don't really care. Do you? So yeah. So didn't it say I don't care. Do you? Something like that. Where is Melania? The these fuck days? is wrong? Whatever happened to Melania Trump? Oh, girl. So uh, so Mary comes out in this thing. And then behind her in the same car is Angie K. So the producer's like, so let's talk about Angie. Let's talk about you and, uh, or or she, the producer asked Mary about the relationship with Angie. And Mary goes, well, life is weird. I'm like, yeah, you don't have to tell us, Mary. You're married to your grandfather. Life is weird. She uh, gave my trust. I can't tell you where it happened. And basically the producers were like, Mary, if you want to stay on the show, you have to show up places and you have to at least talk to somebody. You can't just stand on the sign <laughs> and call everybody ugly and fat. Okay. You can actually add. So Mary is really trying in this episode to smile a lot and be like, yeah, I just, me and Angie. <laughs> Angie's. I love participating. <laughs> she's great. Angie's, uh, I don't know when it. <laughs> so Angie's like, how did we go from who's Angie to showing up to a party together in matching purses? Ha 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 ha. I have a bigger question. How did Angie K wind up as the center snowflake on the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City display? Did you see that? Angie's in the center. What salt? What display? You know, when they put out their hands, it's like the Real House of Salt Lake City. That's Angie's Heather. the center. No, Angie is the center snowflake. Heather is all the way to the left. Whitney is all the way to the right. So I think that means that in the main the credits. In the main credits. So I think that means that um Heather and because you know they did that with Teresa and Melissa, they put them on the edges. So Angie, I guess, is the glue this season. The glue. Isn't that weird? Heather and Whitney all around the fringes. You shouldn't say glue because they've got horses in this episode, and that's what they turn horses. That into. is rude. <laughs> that is rude. That is not Greek. It is Greek glue. So Angie goes, "I don't know what happened to us suddenly being best friends, but I think it is because she told me I had lipstick. I told her she had lipstick on her teeth." <laughs> Something and we see the reunion where she's telling her you have lipstick on your teeth. <laughs> and then it cuts like, friends. And then like 10 seconds later, and Andy asks Mary, So who do you like in this group? She goes, uh Angie. <laughs> Everyone's like, What? <laughs> what did that <laughs> happen? Just and then she invited me to Kathy Hilton's Christmas party. Wait, so Kathy Hilton's inviting Miriam Cosby to her party. What is happening here? Yeah. And then um she's like, She even has the same sunglasses because I do. And then we see them, they're driving in a car together and they're wearing like matching sunglasses. And it's actually so cute because they're just not even talking. They're just sitting there smiling, just happy to be with each other. That's just like we're two girls spending money on stupid things. You know, let's yeah. be friends together. Um, Angie K has really taken some classes this year. She's really like become more natural, but it's still hilarious because she's still a robot. But you can tell that she's more like, I'm going to tell it <laughs> like it is now. I have yes, earned my girl. spot here. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Uh, 
So um, she knows she's soft on the inside and doesn't share it. So I'm honored to be one of the people that she shares it with. So then Mary says, um, yeah, she just is, brings a genuine realness, like a genuine person that like cares about me and food in my teeth. So then we see Heather's auditioning arrive. Heather arrives um, and she's skinny now. Heather's like, hi, skinny bitch here. And then Brittany's with her. And Mary's like, is that Heather? And Lisa's like, um, is that hearts on that lady? Because Brittany. No, Heather, no, Heather's wearing like a latex dress that has little hearts attached to oh, it. Three dimensional so hearts. Like, is that hearts on her? Is that warts or hearts? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with Heather? How did she get so skinny? And why does she have big pink warts all over? <laughs> so Mary's like, oh, you look pretty and thin. You're thin. Oh, my God, you're thin. And Heather's like, I've cracked the code. I've lost some weight now. And now Mary likes me. I've gone from inbred to pretty and thin. It's the start of a beautiful relationship. Oh, honey, nobody said you're not inbred anymore. Like, don't give Mary that much credit. She's, like, projecting this friendship onto Mary. Give Mary a minute, okay? She it's said not... you look thin. She didn't say you're suddenly less inbred looking. Yeah, inbred and and and, and weight are not on a spectrum together. <laughs> the same like, you, like, it doesn't change. You can be thin and inbred. Yeah, you can, you can be you can yo yo, but you can still yo be a yodeler. Yeah, but good for her. She looks really pretty and she looks really happy and energetic or whatever. Yeah. So then, um, wait, where were we? Did, did uh, have we, we were... already done that? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. So look how A type. I'm like, uh, what? A, but I didn't scroll. So how am I supposed to know what happened? Control, control freak. So Sarah, um, Lisa's realtor comes and uh, she's auditioning. Sarah, you look so beautiful. Never see her again. And then um, a huge pink fur coat walks in that's shaped like a heart. But to some, it may look like a chicken liver. That's fine. Either way, this a is a chicken breast, kind of right. A chick, like a like a red chicken breast. Yeah. Yeah, two red chicken breasts stuck together, which is actually yeah, not an actual heart. It's not just like a circle with little valves coming out of it and pumping. <laughs> this is Bronwyn, our new cast member. Oh my God, I would expect nothing less. You look beautiful, Bronwyn. You guys, this is my friend Bronwyn, and we all know how it works out with my friends that I bring on the show. <laughs> I met, I met Lisa. I mean, uh, I met Bronwyn at least seven years ago, and then we have Bronwyn, who's like. Lisa will tell you that she met me at a nurturing years ago and she said something like I was picking up like what was what I was getting was like kind of cool and like I kind of like swatted her away and like I didn't need her opinion because she was in sweats apparently that's what her story is and then we kept Lisa telling her story yeah and then she was like why is this little homeless girl talking to me I mean I don't remember but it sounds like something I would have done yeah probably yeah <laughs> oh so you're an asshole I love that she's just like I'm a horrible human being thank you thank you so much for having me and um Bronwyn's like yeah i would have done that and lisa's saying oh my god it's crazy because we've reconnected and she goes yeah we had a mutual friend so we've seen each other so they don't know each other yeah and i can't believe lisa is falling for this again where she's vouching for somebody else don't forget lisa was the one who brought monica on last season and vouched yeah. for her ass too so <laughs> i don't know the, how much we trust lisa at this point yeah she's so witty so Lisa's telling the girls, like, Heather was saying, I'm going to wear a kiss lip machino dress. And I was like, I hope it's not the same as Bronwyn's. And Bronwyn's like, that's lace, latex. That's not machino. Yeah. Moschino. Moschino. Sorry. Yeah. Moschino. She's like, it's that's machino. latex, not moschino. And Lisa's like, oh, my God, we love her. Oh, my God, can I touch? We love her. I love her love of fashion. She's so over the top. Over the top. Over the top. It's a flashback. Over the top. 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 Some more than others. Oh, no, do a flashback. Five days earlier at lunch, Bronwyn is in a bikini. So she's in this bikini that we've seen in the preview. She's wearing a like leopard print bikini, ye bright yellow bikini and puffer jacket <laughs> and walking down the street. The weather comes up and it's 37 degrees. And then she goes into the restaurant and the lady's like, <laughs> can, I, can I help you? You piece of fucking trash. <laughs> She's like, I'll have a lemon San Diego. Is that what is a lemon? The fuck San is a lemon San Diego, <laughs> girl. Uh, San Diego's enough of a lemon these days. Have you been downtown lately? It doesn't need you dissing it. Sorry, San Diego. Oh my goodness. And then so that Lisa shows up. She goes, Oh my God, I knew you'd be on bar charts. I almost wore mine. I almost wore mine. Oh my God, I'm incepting. I'm going through the flashback of me choosing my clothes. Wait a minute. Why am I doing the dish? I'm at the catch on. 
I'm in the kitchen. I went too far back. I'm too far okay. back. Move me forward. Wait, hold on. Spin a top. Forward. Spin a top quickly. Paris is upside down. Okay, we're back. Okay. So, wow, you know what's so weird? I was doing dishes in Paris, and now I'm back here. But Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio is still fucking a 20-year-old. It's so crazy. It's so crazy, <laughs> no matter what reality I'm in. Oh, my God. I thought you were going to be in Melange. Because, yeah, I was going to, but it was, like, crazy with the show. Yeah. So, but I took a tour in Paris. Yeah, it's, like, so hard not being in Milan right now. It's like, oh, my God, Bronwyn, you're so cool, Bronwyn. And she's like, yeah, we were... You know, they're like funny chaos. That's my brand. And I didn't set out for that, but that's why I arrived. And she's got this kind of, I don't know if she just started using bleaching strips on the front of her teeth, but she's got very white teeth right here, just in the front yeah, part. Yeah, just the first two, and yeah. she kind of makes her lip, does this like buck tooth thing while she's talking. She's an odd chick. She and is. I think she's going to work out. Really yeah, she, well. she reminds me of like somewhere between like Amelie and Winona Ryder. And so she's Amelie played by like a younger Countess Luann. Uh, yeah, with some Demi Moore in there and Jordana Brewster. Yeah, she's a lot. There's a lot going on. And I just kept looking at her thinking, do I like her? And I think I do. And I think I, I, I definitely do. like this because I think she could peg herself too. She's I, like, yeah. I never really wanted to be sexy or cool, which I was like, I don't believe you. But you're totally hitting the mark. So I like yes. that. And then she's like, and right now I'm dressed like a Tim Burton character. And I feel amazing. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, she I'm does look like, like it. I was like, I was getting Winona Ryder from her. She goes, thank you for asking. I don't know how to explain this. You know, so. Uh, I'm just so weird. It's so. Let me tell you what's the weirdest thing about me. Being weird. I'm just so artistic. I'm like, oh. I am a weird, like independent off. soul. So, yeah. Lisa, we only went to two shows because we were, like, skiing in Aspen. And I have family to take care of. And, like, four dogs running around. You know, Douglas and Zoe and Petey and Freddie. And then we see a picture of these dogs. And when I tell you, she just bought the same dog four times. Yeah, She's one like, of those. She's like, I have to be. Listen, honey, I'm wacky. We need to get the same four dogs. <laughs> we need I'm to a get... wacky person, okay? I'm going to collect box. I'm going to collect boxers. Because that's what they were. And they're all named from characters from House of Cards. And she goes, and I, I, you know, I also have a teen with emotions, Gwen. And I have my husband who's just a little older than me. He's 65. And she's, how old is she? 30-something? 38? I don't Six. know because she's on her first season face. It's hard to tell. But then yes. we see uh, that House of Cards thing. It's not a good sign because House of Cards was really good. And then it turned into a total flop. <laughs> well, so things really worked out well for Kevin Spacey. So Lisa's, Actually, I think he's doing great now. Isn't he back doing something or other? Is he? I think is they uncanceled, uncanceled his ass. He got bravoed. They're like, <laughs> never mind. Everyone forgot Kevin. There's a career back. Uh, he just unlimped himself and walked down the sidewalk. Yeah. So Lisa's like... All the witnesses so, are dead now. Dun, dun, dun. So, how's Gwen? And Bronwyn's like, good. I told her, remember when you and Jack would go to concerts together? She's going to be 18. They're so grown up. They want nothing to do to do with us. Just like most grown ups, <laughs> it's crazy. And Bronwyn's like, "Yeah, I'm, I don't know if I went through this with Jack. It's like he's a boy, but Gwen is now the younger, smarter, prettier version of me. I just have to pay for everything." Yeah, that's basically like Whitney. Some more than others. Some more than others. We're going back. Sorry, Bronwyn. We're going back to the future. Where we're going, we don't need roads. This is my friend Bronwyn. This is my friend. <laughs> Why is Lisa holding a log? So <laughs> she's just dancing on a big checkered floor backwards. <laughs> so Meredith's like, oh, well, hello, I'm here at the party. Yeah, um, and so there's like a lot of like talking. And then now Whitney shows up in a car. Oh, no, she's in a car. The girl. People are like, oh, my God, Mary. where's Whitney, guys? Where's Whitney? Where is she? I'm she like, oh. Whitney is in a car. <laughs> I'm with my friend Melly. I became friends with her because I thought she said me, but actually her name is Melly. I said, well, I'm Whitney. What's your name? And she said, Melly. And I smelled my armpits and she said, no, Melly. And I said, sorry. I was like, your name's Millie? She said, Melly. I said, that's what I said. Millie. No, Melly. Millie, what's the problem here? And I'm joking. I really don't even know this girl's name. I don't think they ever said it out loud, did she? I don't remember. I, we, I just saw it on the screen, I and I was like, I don't know how to pronounce that. But she's very, very, when I say very pretty, I don't say that in a dismissive way. Like, sorry, I didn't learn your name, but you're pretty. I don't mean it like that. I mean, you're fucking gorgeous. Like, how do you walk around like that in life? I don't, how are people not whistling at you while you, like, how are you not getting 
harassed right now, except by me, this vlogger. He's like <laughs> watching you, like, wow, you're so pretty. Can I, can I have an autograph? You're pretty, Melly. On the booby, it's a little hairy, but just work your way around with the sharpie. You can do it. <laughs> Normally, I'd be excited to see Lisa because she has good parties, but honestly, I'm surprised she's invited me because she hasn't felt like a safe place. I know. I don't know. <laughs> I know. I don't know. She hasn't felt like a safe place. This isn't a YMCA. <laughs> <laughs> There's no this is not a shelter coming. in a storm. What the fuck you're are you talking weather. about? You're bad weather. People, you're not the one that needs a safe place. <laughs> People need to be safe from you, slanderer. <laughs> so she's like, when it comes to my personal life, the past six months, they are some of the best six months of my life. My business is going well. By the way, her business is not even the same anymore. It doesn't have the same name, and now it's turned into a pyramid scheme. More to come. <laughs> and my relationship is good. Last five minutes ago, your relationship sucked. Like, you were such a liar in your story. You're a liar in every single storyline that you have. So because everything from last year is just like everything's amazing. Justin's amazing. My house is amazing that I couldn't afford last year because of everything was going to hell. And now my friends are mean to me. But my relationships with my friends is another story. Last time I saw them in New York. There wasn't resolve, resolve, resolve. Is this working? Resolve, resolve, resolve. Are we Lefarve. back in time? Lefarve. 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 Whitney, what are you Lefarve. doing? Lefarve. We're going back in time. No, Whitney, we haven't started that part yet. Flimler, stapler, water bottle. Draconius. Puppy cat. Huh. So we do go to a, the reunion of people getting mad at uh, Whitney, and she's saying... <laughs> It's like so many justified, so many justifiably angry people yelling at Whitney. <laughs> Whitney, you lied. You told everybody I was fucking a horse at a rodeo. Well, I thought you were, though. It doesn't mean that I don't have my feelings about that. So she's like, there's been a lot of distance with some of them, especially Lisa. And Melly, or Melly, or Melly, I think it's Melly says um uh she says nothing actually she's just i just i'm sorry i just put that no <laughs> I, put, put non pink, I just put melly non-matching pink I, I don't know why it bothered me but i was like those and i'm sure she knew that they didn't match but i think they were actually clashing pinks and i was like do i really want to i'll just put that note in there and let ben do it <laughs> so lisa um so whitney and melly show up and lisa is like oh she actually shot up. I'm like, it's the first, it's the first day of shooting. Whitney, Whitney will be there. If there's a camera, Whitney will be there. So they all hug her, and Heather's talking to Lisa, and she goes, um, did Whitney actually say hi to you? Should I tell her to say hi to you? And she goes, no, she'll find out later that she has bad manners. So then, Brittany is there. So this is a new chick. This is someone else's friend. And That's she... Heather's. Oh, this is Heather's friend. So she hugs Meredith, and she's like, are you a hugger? I'm a hugger. <laughs> okay, good. We'll hug then. And Meredith's like, ah, ah, well, there never was a discussion either way, but you can hug. I'm a hugger now, so. I've known Brittany for years. We have friends. She's a messed up Mormon who's been divorced and been through the ringer. She's dating Jared Osmond, as in Osmond Osmond, nephew of Donnie and Marie, related to a Nutrisystem commercial, which in Mormon culture is the equivalent of dating Prince Harry. Until if today, America's going to love this clip. It's the equivalent of dating Prince Harry, if Prince Harry was possibly fucking the other prince. What's his name? William. Stephen. William. <laughs> Prince William. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we see a picture of him, and he does look like an Osmond. An Osmond. I mean, he looks he looks like one of them. He is a soldier of love. And so uh, <laughs> he is one of he's like a clone, he's a cloned copy, like one of Bronwyn's boxers, you know. And so then um we see a clip of Harry on the phone with I don't know what I'm even writing. Who's Brit? Brit, Brit, Brit Brittany. Brittany. And Brittany is like, oh, yeah. um, she's no, well, so Brittany's actually on the phone with, with and Heather. Uh, Heather. And she's like, Well, Heather, as of this morning, I'm single and ready to mingle. Cause I'm a hugger, and that's the way the cookie crumbles. I'm like, <laughs> How many cliches can you say in one line? And she's like, Yeah, me and Donnie Osmond's possibly niece or son or nephew, or cousin, depending on where you are on the tree. Well, we've been dating legit months, and we've broken up, what, 16 times? 
a lot. I mean, it's just a hamster wheel of will we be together? Won't we be together? But you know those Osmonds. God. I mean, the closer you get to them, the more you feel like brother and sister, which just gets you hornier. You know what I mean. You know, there's just something about her. Maybe it's those teeth that go up three stories. He's just so yummy. I'm like, okay, lady, you can simmer down. Okay, you're auditioning a little too hard right now. She is very like, I'm so sexy, but her vibe is like, I'm that friend who never stops fucking calling you with drama. <laughs> because it's like the only yeah. thing that can get my boyfriend hard. You know what I mean? And I'm like, so, stop calling me. Like, get a hobby. Go play tennis. Like, <laughs> I can't take another. It's eight months. You break up twice a month. No, I'm not yeah, fucking I'm even picking it. up the phone. Scam likely. Okay. So um, then um, uh, now we see a lady is talking to Heather about her dress. And she's like, are, Heather, are you kidding me? What is happening with you? Is this count for me to be a friend of? Was that good? Was that a good audition? And Heather's like, it's a Zempic baby. And lady's like, oh, you look fabulous. <laughs> she's like, it's been longer overdue glow. Thank you, modern medicine. You know what? And thank you, Heather Gay, for just de-shaming the fucking Ozempic. Okay? All of you need to get the fuck over yourselves. And it's nice to have a chapter being led by Heather Gay. He was just like, fuck you, I'm taking Ozempic. I don't care what you bitches think. Good yeah. for you. Good for you. Okay, so Mary um, goes is talking to Bronwyn. They're sitting, I think this is when they're sitting on a bench together. And Mary is like, oh, I love your coat. And Bronwyn's like, and I love yours too, because you know what? I have the same one, and we're going to get along just fine, Mary. And then Brittany comes out of out of nowhere and plops herself right in between the two women. She's, oh, Bronwyn, I love your costume. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, oh, no, you don't come to the couch with Mary and I and call it a costume. Right, Mare? We're basically besties now. Right, Mare? <laughs> yeah, you don't do that. Those are fighting words to me and Mare. Right, yeah. Mare? Mary's like, ah, uh, yeah, because we don't wear costumes. We wear fashions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so Mary just goes, it cuts to Mary. She goes, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> and Mary's like, to, she's talking to Brittany and she's pointing out Bronwyn's dress. She goes, that's like so fashion. I mean, and she tells us, you know, she's the one that looks like a costume. That looks like a German shepherd coat. I mean, woof. <laughs> no, we actually, they put in a sound effect. Woof. Oh. And then she's like, yeah, it looks like she took about 17 German shepherds and <clears throat> just like dyed them red. And wore them. Gross. <laughs> Something ain't right. <laughs> so then, She's right, the lady is wearing full on fur. I know. Brittany's like, yeah. that was like a ratty, like maroon kind of. And like, we hear her telling somebody at some point, she's like, oh, but this is my grandmother's. This is like 117 years old. <laughs> it's like, okay, murder, because it was like before it was bad. It was pioneer times. Yeah. And so Brittany goes, I love fashion, you know? And Mary's like, but the texture of your girl, like disgusting. <laughs> German coat, German shepherd coat. That's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> She's like, this is Yves Saint Laurent. Let's start with that. And Bronwyn's like, yeah, this is, it's Yves Saint Laurent. There's like three of them. I have one of them. Rihanna has another one. Lisa Milan tried to take the third one, but it's actually in the museum. <laughs> It's not funny. Rihanna and two the two housewives shows of the week. Rihanna <laughs> yeah, has made really the making an impression. You know, if do you feel like Rihanna just sits at home like I fucking love my life. I'm on yes, two of my shows I, this week. Yes. I'm on two of my shows this <laughs> like week. Like that that's like a dream. That's yeah. like a dream. <laughs> and so then Britain Bronwyn's like, you can love it or hate it, but it's not I mean, congratulations, you guys. You buy expensive clothes. <laughs> like you're such you're such assholes. And by the way, you both look fucking stupid. Okay. <laughs> you, Mary looks like a freeway underpass. And you you just look fucking crazy, lady, okay, with your big chicken cutlet fur. <laughs> so um, Mary's like, yeah, okay. So Mary goes, yeah, listen, I have a whole office, and it's just closed. And Bronwyn goes, yeah, it's not an office. It's an archive. <laughs> and then Mary goes, yeah, because when I was younger, I had five siblings, and we never had enough. And Brittany goes, yeah, so you become like a hoarder. She goes, no. <laughs> She's like, I'm not a hoarder. I'm not a hoarder. That's, That's a, a little, little bit much. By the way, Mary is a hoarder. So then <laughs> Bronwyn's like, Brittany, in these words, we need to get Brittany a thesaurus. And Brittany goes, well, no, not a hoarder. But like, there is scarcity. You know, I was poor. I grew up there. So I had that. Mary's like, no, no. no poor. I didn't say poor. We are poor. No, I'm, I'm, I didn't say poor. And then clown music plays as Brittany tries to figure out what she's just stepped in, right? <laughs> and Brittany goes, well, I was poor. And Mary just looks at her like, Gross. <laughs> You're a Why are person? poor people talking? Why are poor people coming and calling us costume wearing people? Have you not heard Mary's famous monologue at her church where she was yelling at the church for not getting her her 
enough birthday presents. And when she says, you bunch of stingy poor people to her own congregation, she's not going to look kindly on a poor person. You are trying to bond in the wrong way, ma'am. Or how about, yes. Hey, what do you think about 7-Elevens, Mary? I was about to say the 7-Elevens. So, um, so Brittany is like, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I come from five siblings, so I found myself hiding rolls in my purse to take them home. Mary oh, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 I would never. <laughs> rolls in your purse? Gross. <laughs> Mary and Brittany's like, well, I did. I did. <laughs> and Bronwyn's like, oh, and that's, and she goes, and that's totally not okay. And Mary goes, no, no, that's not okay. I didn't do that. Putting food in your purse. Like, no, Bronwyn's like, it's okay. It's okay. You were oh. poor. And I wrote it wrong, but she's like, you were poor and you, you took some bread. Good for you. And, and Mary like, goes, no, disgusting. it's not. Gross. Disgusting. <laughs> I would never do that. Putting food in your purse. And Bron- um, she's like, no. So Brittany's like, well, maybe if you grew up poor, you'd understand. And Mary goes, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> She's so disgusted. Mary's like, Brittany's also such a fucking rich person that's like, oh, I may be rich and fabulous and fucking Donny Osmond's son or Donny Osmond himself. Who knows? Maybe it's his mother. But God, I was poor once. So I totally get you guys. But also, Mary can, can sniff out bullshit. She actually really can. She can tell when someone's coming in with a bull, like, with bullshit trying to, like, like, get in with her and she's like no i will not do this listen if you're gonna take bread from a restaurant you have to demand that a waiter comes over and wrap it up for you in a box you don't put it in your pocket yeah she's like i'll barely take bread when i'm in a restaurant (laughs) okay so now heather's talking to meredith and she's like so have you seen whitney because she's here she's here yeah she's here oh oh it's a flashback she's here she's She's here here. she's She's here here. she's here here. (laughs) so now a flashback heather visiting meredith in bed (laughs) Yeah, Meredith is like perked up in bed or perched up in bed. She's like, How are you feeling, Meredith? She's like, I mean, I'm feeling good. I had a breast reduction, you know, and I've had to go back to redo it five times because I started as a B and then I went to a C, got to take that, went to a B, and I ended up being a D minus and I ended up as a G. I didn't even know they had G's. And the next morning I woke up, my boobs were elbows. <laughs> well, the doctor told me if I want my breasts to stop growing, I have to stop breastfeeding Brooks. And I said, are you out of your mind? How is that toddler going to eat? And so unfortunately, it just means I'll have to have many breast reductions to have my child survive i've been getting breast reductions but i've been getting brooks additions i just keep getting more and more brooks stapled onto my breasts <laughs> i would say the most awkward moment of that medical exam was when the doctor was looking at my breasts when seth came in and motorboated me that was an unfortunate moment but other than that it went pretty smooth <laughs> now there's like wow i wish i had your problems god geez i just no matter how then I got my boobs just keep getting bigger. <laughs> it's not funny. I went from an A to a B to a double D and back again to an A. Remember when I did the letters a second ago? <sighs> These are caviar problems, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> so they talk about last year. And Meredith's like, oh, it's just hard to figure out where I even stand because the way we left things in Bermuda was very harmful. Harmful, harmful, harmful. Those, I will accept this now as well. Those of you who forgot, Monica told everybody that Meredith was saying all this heinous shit and gathering all this evidence, and it turned out to be Monica. Monica. <laughs> it turned out Monica. to be Monica under her her character. Reality Von Teese. Now, how much of this Meredith really did engage with, nobody knows. But everybody totally blamed Meredith for this and never this, apologized. Like, yes. me, like, it all turned into being about Monica. And so Meredith is... Now, you know Meredith is going to hold a grudge and wait for an yes. apology. So but this Meredith, whole season is going to be how, it was Meredith getting that apology. But game. Meredith also has a bigger issue to deal with. Well, let me tell you, everyone. Okay. You know, nothing got addressed with me. And here's where it stands with Whitney. Last year, Whitney launched a jewelry collection, which you may remember that I have a jewelry collection. It's called Sparkling Brooksies. Beautiful little pendants in the shape of Brooks's head. And this year, in New York, in front of everyone, I announced that I'm going into bath products. And now she's launching bath products. 
Next thing, she's going to have a gay child slapping his name on Walmart jogging pants and selling him at fashion shows. I wouldn't, I mean, where does it end? I wouldn't be surprised if Whitney's daughter, if she ever came down from that soda high, came out with her own brand of tracksuits. Now, I was like, what is she talking about? I don't remember her launching a bath product, but whatever. You know, I have Housewives Watcher memory where everything is erased for the next season. So we see a shot of Whitney announcing on Instagram, the Whitney Rose bath bomb for the girl that likes to take baths, dot, 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 in clean tubs alone. <laughs> That's a, what a catchy motto. She's the, word play, the word play is really off the charts. <laughs> She's making fun of Meredith's line. I'm like, right. I take baths in clean tubs. <laughs> well, she just wants to step on my toes, and it's hurtful. The bath is my thing, and everyone knows it, okay? So I said, stay out of my bath now. You got because now you gotta come for my bath products. <laughs> and Heather goes, um, and you know, Heather's loving all of this because she's like, I can't wait to tell Whitney you're saying all of this. <laughs> and she's like, So, do you think that she got the idea from me? Of course she did. What else was she got the idea? I pitched the whole thing with a pie chart at the reunion. <gasps> there was a pie chart, there were samples. <laughs> everyone saw that I clearly was d developing and promoting a line of bath products that were outlined in a very, very <laughs> obvious and impressionable way. We'll see evidence in a moment. We'll see evidence in a moment. In we'll a moment, see evidence in a moment. In a moment. In a this moment. was an attack on me. So now we're back in the present, and when he's like, it's so beautiful. She's like looking at a puddle. So the girls, people are like toasting with meat sticks and everything, and Lisa's like, guys, Jock is like obsessed with Columbia. It's like teaching him things, and they have like the coolest bookstores and barbershops. Yeah, places outside of America can actually have cool barbershops and bookstores. It's wild. It's crazy. Like before he left, he had mushroom hair that he comes forward, but now in Colombia, he has mushroom hair that he comes forward, but in Spanish. Yeah. It's amazing. They have Barnes and Noble, but it's called Barnes and Noble there. It's nuts. Yeah, he even found two Michelin star restaurants in Bogota. They were like hidden under a pile of leaves. And he was like, oh my God, it's a Michelin star restaurant. I don't know how he found them, but I was like, save those for when Daddy and I come to visit. Yeah, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Hold on, let me, hold on. I'm going to cry thinking about Jack. Oh, this will make me feel better. Sorry, that was the top, everybody. Uh, let me, let me read my most recent text from Jack. It's green and it says, never contact me again, you stupid fucking bitch. I blame you for all of this. I miss him. I, I miss him. I love that. I love Lisa Barlow acting like so surprised that a major world capital is like, has a cool bookshop and actually has a Michelin rated restaurant. Can you believe it? They have electricity in Colombia. Bogota. They have electricity. Jack made it. He got onto a little bicycle and he's been pedaling nonstop to power the entire country. I just had to give my face a full pet down like a dog. I've grown so much hair. I just needed a pet. I feel just, better now. You know, you know what? I, you know who feels better? Jack, because he goes Jack. to the best coffee shops. Jack, Jack found coffee in Colombia. Bronwyn's like, I don't know what mission he's on, but you know, he jams. He goes and co gets coffee. That's wild. You know, this is not the Mormonism that I grew up in. You know, because my parents are both converts, and they raised my sibs and I as Mormon, and like. They're both very devout, and, you know, they expected us to be devout. And we went on missions. Some of us had more success than others. And then to prove what a rebel she is, we see a picture of her when she was young with a Burger King crown on. I was like, oh, my God. It's like your heroine picture. I was like, what is a Sid and Nancy? Who is that heathen with a Burger King fat on? Her friends were like, oh, my God, what is the future of Mom Friendster? Oh, my God, those burgers have caffeine in them. What a slut. No one's talking to her again. So Brom was like, yeah, I got kicked out. Yeah. So then we go over to Angie and Whitney and Melly and, and she's like, so how do you know each other? And are you the same age? Wow. Excuse me. I have a question to ask Whitney. Excuse me, everybody. It's very important. Whitney, what's up with the bath bomb? What bath bombs? Oh no, take shelter. Bath bombs are coming in. No, bath bombs. Bath uh, bumps? Bath bombs. Bath what bumps? 
Now Bob's with me. <laughs> you know, it's so strange to me because in New York, I had a very official ringing of the stock market bell to announce my new bath bombs, and then here you are launching a bath line too. And then um, she, now Whitney's have- just looking at her confused, and Whitney's always looking confused. Like that's she has like resting confused face, but. Then we see the clip of the reunion. Because I didn't remember. I didn't remember either. (laughs) Meredith goes, well, my warm and fuzzy. Which they were playing the, what's your warm and what's your fuzzy? (laughs) So she's like, my warm and fuzzy was the churning butter scene. I just love churning the butter. Oh, well, you know what? She's going to launch a butter line soon. And Meredith goes, oh, a butter bath bomb, maybe. You know, you launched jewelry last year and you launched bath. Oh, sorry, we're back to present. But you know what? That the extent of her announcement was, oh, a butter bath bomb, maybe. That yeah, it was like fun. a joke. Like, maybe I'll do butter that's bath bomb. That's crazy. Butter bath bomb. <laughs> that's her launching a bath line. So she goes, okay, so you launched jewelry last year after me, and now you launch bath this year after I said I was doing. What is your problem with me? <laughs> what is your problem with me? I have no problem with you. I think you're reading way too much into this. Into this. Into this, into this. Is it working? Are we going back yet? Into this, into this. Whitney, stop! We're not going back. Whitney, your 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 dress is on backwards. Whitney, <laughs> sorry. Whitney, you can stop waving your arms in your face. It is not a substitute for the scream squiggling into a flashback. Strobe light, strobe light, <laughs> strobe light. Everything's going slow. Whitney, you can stop making the sound of a harp. It is not taking us back in time. If you have epileptic see, stop looking at this. Or you're gonna die. <laughs> Now, Whitney, I'm a little offended because I just announced that I was going to start flapping my arms around as my new brand. And now here you are flapping your arms around like you're in a flashback. I am definitely concerned that Meredith is spending too much time in the bathtub because it's making her wrinkled up and shrivelly, especially She's... in her brain. She's eating a lot of prunes now. No, Whitney, it's that she's... She's pruning. She's cutting leaves off of trees. No, her skin's her skin's t- she's turning into a prune. How can she turn into a vegetable? Oh my God, save Meredith! The message I'm getting from you is I don't want to be your friend, and that's what I'm hearing from you, Wendy. Cause I launched a bath bomb. You know what? I love you as a friend, Meredith. Oh yeah. Then if you love me as a friend, you would have picked up the phone. You would have said, Meredith, I want to launch a bath bomb. But if you were really friends, you would know that I already sold um, bath bombs. Even I know this answer. Jesus, Whitney. (laughs) Yeah, that's how I launched my business. You, 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 you even carried Iris and Bloody Blue Blue, whatever my brand was called before. You even sold that in your store, remember? Well, you didn't have bath bombs. (laughs) Uh huh. I just didn't. They were only online only, though, but they weren't in your store, but I had them still. Well, you didn't tell me you had bath bombs. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. huh (laughs) But the only thing is, like, I didn't see bath bombs in a jewelry store. Yeah, but you saw skincare in a jewelry store. Was that a word or an emotion? (laughs) (laughs) And Mary's like, why are they fighting over a bath bomb? And why are you fighting over tubs? I mean, I just don't. Trust tubs. <laughs> Sit in a tub. Right? <laughs> yeast you... infections. <laughs> I, love, I love when Mary just deviates into a perspective on an everyday item that she doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> so when he's like, I don't think it's a it's fair accusing me of bad behavior and you don't want to be friends. I, I could accuse you of not wanting to be friends because I never hear from you. Well, yeah, well, that's because, you, well, you, you know what happened last year. I was held accountable for all the stuff that Reality Von Teese did. And if the producers would like to insert a tsa, you can do it right now. Well, it hasn't shifted. Okay, you can stop your well now. Well, oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay, everyone, put on your seatbelts. We're going back. Well, 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 well. Two weeks earlier. <laughs> Heather is, notice that Heather is in every single shit starting scene. 
It was <laughs> so funny. So Heather is with Lisa and Angie, and she's like, well, Lisa, um, Meredith thinks that she's owed apologies, guys. And then she's like, well, I feel that I am owed an apology. <laughs> Last year, I was part of side conversations about my marriage, that I was part of the Greek mafia, that I am selling tzatziki to raccoons. I don't know if that made that to air, but it was a vicious rumor. <laughs> and all I have to say is thank you. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten another season. So thank you for letting me be here. So then we come back and Whitney's like, I don't know what you're apologizing for or where you're coming from, but what I'm going to apologize for is not asking your address so I could send you bath bombs. Hello, I am here. I've decided it's my turn. Excuse me. No, Excuse I am me. fighting with no, her. No, we are still fighting. No, my turn. My turn. We're, we're running fighting. out of time. The movie no, is about to begin. No, we're fighting. Can I talk to Meredith? Well, Whitney, I I'm processing what you're saying. So you can move along now. <laughs> okay. It's like it's like Whitney. It's like Whitney deposited cash into an ATM. It's like doo, 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 doo. I won't get back to you to verify the amount of cash. You <laughs> my, turn. my turn. My turn. My, my turn. turn. All right. Next in line. How may I help you today? I want to talk a bit. Heather is saying you want an apology from me, and you know I have something to show you. And she pulls out a prop, and it's like a big <laughs> scroll, and she un unscrolls the scroll. It was like normally these things drive me nuts. So this is like gives me like trauma to like Potomac when they do stupid props, and you're like, but I was like, I cracked <laughs> up because just because she's just like, this will be hilarious, this will light up, and I was like, I know what you're fucking doing. You want this to be a viral moment, and God damn it, it's working for me. <laughs> she saw it on Real Housewives in New Jersey, and yeah. it's like, scroll, I'm going to use that one. So she whips out the scroll, and she, like, slaps it down, and it just goes, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And everyone at <laughs> the party is like, is she having, does she have a scroll? <laughs> and Meredith is so mad. And I was like, all right, well, this is, you know, I'm here to have a serious conversation. I mean, this is a serious form. Hold on one second. Whitney, you stole the bath bombs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, Meredith, I am happy to give you an apology, but here's a few things I'd like an apology for. Number one. Oh, my God. So then she unscrolls the scroll. We have to read the stuff that's on the scroll. Okay, I did not so take a picture of it. Let's see. I did, but I've taken 97 while you, pictures. While you look then. that up, I will continue with what they say. And you're saying, it's not made up. Oh, here. Oh, no, go ahead. Go you ahead. suggested I was involved in organized crime. I, like, I did not suggest that. I just merely said, you <laughs> seem like you might be part of the Greek mafia, perhaps invented in that scene. Okay, here's what's on the here's what's on the scroll. Encouraging. It's in really big letters, yeah, but then she changed to smaller letters because I think she's like, I'm not going to have enough room on here. Encouraging someone to sue me and take my home just in time for the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas. Christmas like you Christmas really at the thought soup she kitchen. was you really thought she was gonna take her home for Christmas. And it's, she says there's a sentence on here. I don't understand the context. She goes, Christmas at the soup kitchen. I don't know what that's even about. I guess they got in a fight there. Suggesting I'm invited. I'm no, involved, I'm involved in, Oregon. in Oregon. Maybe or oh, they, farming. They, they blurred out a whole one was so salacious, <laughs> they blurred it out. Suggesting I'm involved in Oregon. <laughs> Forming, and there's a whole blocked out thing. That shit's no, funny. I said you played a church organ, and it's a very different thing. You guys literally she a paragraph to... blocked out. That is so fucking funny. It's I so noticed salacious. that when she when she unfurled that, I was like, wow, I can't believe someone that scroll is actually blocked out. And then she goes, and then there's another like subject uh, dash, and she goes, which by the way. My business partners would like an apology for that one, too. <laughs> Whatever was blurred out, the business partners want that. So I guess she was accusing her of organ farming out of her out of her hair salons. <laughs> and please, then there's another one that please, says... Please say that's true. The last one we can see says... Uh, the last bullet point. Threatening rumors. Oh, and then there's one that says... <laughs> perpetuating narratives. Uh, something on Twitter. It is wrong and it is vile. <laughs> The organ suggesting I'm involved in organ. I'm dead. <laughs> I know. Oh, me is that? Oh, wait, wait. Is that organized? Oh, maybe. Oh, oh it's probably that's probably organized the organized crime. crime. Oh, damn it. I like <laughs> organ stealing. She though. hyphenated organized, so it says organ dash, but then it goes into the blurry part. 
So That's it looks funny. like it's going to say organ farming. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm glad you caught that. People would be like, you idiots! Okay, you're <laughs> no. right, though. They would have been right. Okay, so then um, Angie's uh, so Meredith is like, oh, God, it's a list of made-up stuff. She goes, it is not made up. You suggested organized crime. And she says, no, I did not. You did. Number two, you suggested they sue me and take my house. <laughs> and then... Um, and you perpetuated narratives uh, on Twitter. And Heather's like, well, this is some calculated shit. She had to go to the craft store, catalog every grievance. I'm like, we saw your pioneer party last year. You spent a good amount of time in that craft store, Heather. Yeah, but this is to just have a fight with somebody. And Mary's like, I mean, she found glue. She found a stick. She had to get paper. There's a feather on there. <laughs> she, she found glue on a feather. <laughs> she she glued a string. She has time. <laughs> Probably too much time. <laughs> So then Angie's going off, and Meredith's like, you know what? I am done with you. I am disengaging with this. <laughs> and Meredith, uh, Angie's like, I thought when she saw the list, she could laugh it off, but she has no sense of humor. I think it all went down the drain with her dirty bathwater. I said it, dirty bathwater. So now it's later, um, and Lisa's like, oh my god, Bronwyn, I need my heart. So they're all inside now at the, in the, at the table. This is so good. She goes, all right, everybody, it's time for dinner, and now I present dinner. She, like, puts her arm up, and the garage door stays closed. <laughs> dinner! It just stays closed. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's this and then it's in front like, of it. <laughs> it slowly opens the gates. off the queue. Yeah, she's like, so I just want you to know, like, you know, I love my friends who check out on me, and I love that, but I don't love podcasts. <laughs> okay, we need to work on that, Whitney. Okay, open the gates. A great toast. So they go into dinner, and there's a signed seating, and Brittany's like, oh, wow, this is me. And Mary's like, how am I sitting next to her? <laughs> <laughs> she, goes, she goes, I don't want her sticking bread in my purse. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, that had to be recent because w when you're a little girl, you don't have a purse to stick your bread into. <laughs> her logic is sound. So food is being served. And then Heather's like, Brittany and I have mutual friends. And she's, you know, she's going through a bit of a breakup. And Lisa has fabulous parties. So I figured, you know, I'd show her, you know, I'd show her a village of women. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, are, you guys are women of village. You're villagers burning down each other's homes every day. The village always will have construction in business because you're always burning each other. So Bronwyn's like, um, I have a daughter myself and then two kids, two stepkids who are adults. And Whitney's like, oh, wait, I have stepkids. One of them is only five years younger than me. So I'm actually closer to my kid's age than Justin's age. <laughs> And Brahman's like, well, my husband doesn't like it when I say this, but my stepson is actually older than me by six months. Uh, I don't really think that um, phases this table. Again, Mary Cosby's sitting here. <laughs> Mary Cosby's like, yeah, I married my grandmother's uh, ex-husband. I know, and the other one's married, going out with Donny Osmond. Like, they're all fucking, they've all got <laughs> something like, so? going on. <laughs> yeah. Are we soft swinging or what? So then, um, and then Melly is like, oh my God, you're the hot mom. Yay. And Bronwyn's like, not to him. So Bronwyn says, I never felt a huge discrepancy in our ages. It never like crosses my mind. Everyone thought I wasn't, you know, cute enough to be a trophy wife, but here I am 10 years later. What is this? What is this? I'm ugly thing that Bronwyn has. This is the second time she's referenced. Like I'm never sexy. I'm never cute. You're pretty sexy and cute. I mean, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. Yeah. Maybe that'll be her arc. I so, love when pretty people think they're ugly. It touches yeah. my heart. So Heather's like joking about the scroll and Angie's like, well, when you get to be my age, you need notes on a bigger piece of paper. Ha 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 ha. That was a bad note to start stuff off on. Okay. That was really bad. It was a response. You told me she wanted an apology, and so do I. I'm already apologizing, Angie, and I'm not engaging. Okay, go ahead and ignore me. It's easier to do that. Wait a minute. Are you talking about the scroll? The scroll. She turns away. Look at her. She is guilty. And Heather's like, I thought we resolved this. And she goes, you don't resolve someone telling someone to take my house. I have a daughter. 
And she's using the I have a child. Like the like the Electra way, thought she was gonna be homeless. The way she just scooped in that classic house house trope into this hat, this thing, like I had to bring a scroll today because I have a daughter who almost lost her house <laughs> thanks to Meredith Marks. <laughs> My daughter would be out on the streets. And she goes, Oh God, give me a break. And she goes, You don't do that to a family. She goes, oh geez. Oh God. She goes, you told her to take my house. <laughs> that is absurd. You are absurd. You are. You know what? Just leave me alone. You leave me alone. Okay, you live your life. You live I'll your leave life. My, you I'm going to make your, bath bombs. I'll leave that your taste bath like bomb. butter. Okay? You taste like butter. You're a butter bomb you stealer, are. Whitney. Oh, now I'm still. Okay, so you're I'm getting too far. You're about. You know what? Someone should take you your are. house. You know what? Turn into a big stick of butter. Do you want my house? Bath. I want your house now at this point. She's because, trying to steal my house. I have a child. Uh, well, I have a baby. How about that? Oh. <laughs> I have a toddler named Brooks who is a lot more precious than whatever your daughter's name is. Was it Electra Company? Yeah, so Andy's like, yeah, live your life then. And she goes, I do. Or she goes, in your fucking rental. <laughs> now we're going to rental. And she is, in a new, she is in a new rental. Yeah, every year. So Bronwyn's like, um, guys, can we just draw a line and say no more past stuff? Draw a line. And then she's like, I don't want anyone talking about taking my home. <laughs> yeah, but you're still talking about it. I own my house. I love in it. And <laughs> okay, but now can we draw the line? And you don't tell someone to take a house. But you guys, you're not drawing the line. I don't want a renter talking about my home. Okay, we're drawing a line. Okay, from, <laughs> from this point on. Let's just do it from We're going to draw a line. I will not talk about my beautiful house that my daughter Electra lives in and thinks about horses in. Uh, and then, uh, so it's later. And, um, so, is it Mary? He goes, is that T-Bone? <laughs> and Lisa's like, it's filet. And so Mary's like, I don't want T-Bone. And someone's like, Oh, Mary, are you vegan? She goes, I try to be. Wait, is the dressing already on this? Okay. And she just smiles because you know Mary wants to just complain, but she's like, I'm being nice, Mary. But she has a very good medical reason why. She goes, I just see that big piece of meat at Lisa's party just living in my colon. It's just, I think it's about my insides. It's just like a plan. Like you can't lodge a piece of meat in your colon and just think it's going to come out in a week. Because she's like, it's going to be there for the next nine months. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Mary's like, no one's thinking about their health. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do cheers. Okay, Bezos, Bezos. The theme is Bezos, and the theme begins and ends with the word Bezos. Okay, everyone, Bezos, Bezos. So is she selling something called Bezos? What is I her deal? I have to imagine it's because, oh, because Vita, tequila, Spanish. Yeah, that's what I was it's thinking, like, but she's, she must no, have I'm some sure. other product called Bezos. It's probably like her Mezcal or something. So Whitney's like, so Lisa, in your chairs outside, you brought up a podcast thing. So what's going on? Because I feel like you have a problem with me in a podcast. I got that in person because you said podcast, Whitney. I, you know what? I do have a problem with you in a podcast. Oh. Your podcast was not about you. It was about me in a bad way. But maybe because you're self-absorbed. So you heard it was about yourself. I think that like when you learn to take care of yourselves, you'll learn that people who love themselves take care of themselves. And I would think on your healing journey that you would know that by now. But I do know it. But wait. Wait, what part of the podcast are you talking about? Because remember when you said, Whitney, podcast. What did you mean? Oh, my God. Where do we even start? Like, literally, how do you start a podcast? I didn't actually listen to the thing. But that podcast was two hours long. I didn't talk about you for two hours. Well, you talked about me enough. Like, do you want to say sorry? But I have to know what offended you. If you're going to lie about me to Nick Bill, expect me to tell the truth about myself. I'm not a liar. What did I lie about? You went on a podcast and bash me. You're mad I didn't speak roses about you? No pun. You need to speak Bezos about me, not roses. Okay, you lied to disparage me, and that upset me. I don't lie. I don't lie. My experience isn't a lie. You can't call my feelings a lie. Okay, you know what? You like angles, and I hate angles. <laughs> so Lisa, Whitney's like, this is a narcissist. You can't tell someone they're lying about their feelings. It's like me saying, Diet Coke isn't the best. But then she says, but it is. And I said, no, you're lying. Diet Coke isn't the best. Pepsi's the best. You fucking liar. <laughs> and she's so excited. She's like, I went off script. And I delivered Whitney, a gem. Whitney. <laughs> she was so proud. She's like, she does a little shimmy like, ha. Huh. 
I, mm. I could not have illustrated this any clearer for America. Whitney's pure joy at getting a system upgrade this year is hilarious. Like, she really thinks, like, I'm nailing it this time. Watch, everybody. I think, <laughs> I think that I, Lisa, I think that if I don't kiss everybody, Bezos, if I don't Bezos every part of your asshole, I'm not a good friend. You keep bringing it up. And it was like brought up to me this week, this week, this week, this week. Wait a minute, Whitney, week. stop going backwards. You're about to, you're about to fall into the horse. Oh, I thought I could make the flashback machine no. work. Come on, Glenn, roll her back over here. Oh, sorry. Okay. Dad, Pepsi's the best. Uh, Did we flash back to that part yet? Wait a minute. We're going to back up. Who told Whitney that I said what? It had to be you, Angie, or you, Heather, because we had that conversation in the park, in the park, in the park, in the park. Hi, Heather and Whitney. I mean, hi, Heather and what's your face, Angie? We're having, we're in a park having a conversation, a conversation, a conversation, a conversation. That's not fair. Why does she get to go on a flashback? Sorry, Whitney, you're in the future. We're in the past already, 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 already. Ooh. I just opened my eyes. I'm in Whitney's new house. Oh my God, how funny. We went into Whitney's past, but I was the one who took us there. Ha! Ah, can you send this to the future? Tell future Whitney. Ha! Ah. Mm -hmm. Scroll flip, scroll flip, scroll flip, scroll flip. I am in the past now, and I am coming to Whitney's house. Please tell me I am your first visitor at your new row farmhouse. Well, I went on a walk with Heather and Lisa, and Lisa went on and told me that you did a podcast and said she's a villain. I stand by it. It's your truth. Oh my God, are we already going forward again? It's, it's your, your truth. truth. It's, it's your, your truth. truth. It's, it's your truth. Your... So who told you? So who told you? So who told you? It's her or her? Are you guys already back at Lisa's basis party? That was a really quick flashback. Whitney, keep up past Whitney. <laughs> Wait. Wait, you flashed back to my kitchen? That's not fair, but I stayed in the present. <laughs> Go back and get Whitney. Get Whitney. Get Whitney. Whitney, get out of your ugly kitchen. Am I speaking to President Whitney or past Whitney? I'm President Whitney. There's oh, a... no, no, we're in an alternate universe. <laughs> There's a paradox. It's everything happening everywhere all at... Line, line, <laughs> line, line. <laughs> line. Oh, no. Okay, so who I'm told you? I'm a rock talking to Justin as a rock. Why is there a bagel at this party? Why are we fighting in Iraq again? That's over. Oh my God, my fingers are hot dogs. <laughs> hot dogs, hot, hot dogs. dogs. Okay, oh, no, who told? <laughs> who told? Whitney or Angie? Who told? No, Heather or Angie? Who said it? And so Angie. <laughs> Heather's like, uh, I said nothing to Whitney. I did not say a word to Whitney. And Lisa goes, so that means you, Angie. And Angie goes, which part? <laughs> well, she clearly talked. <laughs> well, I talked about it, yes. And then you know how I feel, isolated. I have to, I have to, I have, I, I am mad right now. She's like, I have no one to talk to. I am so isolated. <laughs> Well, you both vented to me and you said plenty and she said plenty and I took your emotions and made an emotional gyro out of it's it. It's not about you saying plenty. It is about you. I'm isolated. Don't repeat what I say. You want to be involved in this, Angie? Do you want to be involved? Then step in, Angie. I Never. was very calm. I was very calm and collected in all while you were all yelling. So now Lisa's yelling. Don't lie about me. Don't yell at, lie about me. You lie about me. You lie about her. And you lie about everybody. You fucking liar. You said I slept with someone I never slept with. And when he goes, huh? But then I took it back. And then Lisa just. <laughs> and then like Lisa, that matters. You did it for a whole season. You always lie about me. Wait, quick flashback. You slept with the entire bench of the Utah Jazz. Oh, I'm you so traded mad. jizz for jazz tickets. Oh, I'm so mad. I'm going to throw this glass at the ground. Oh, crash. <laughs> So weird now. Lisa's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really Teresa Judice this one and lightly throw a glass on the ground. Look, I'm so mad. And I took it back and said, sorry. I took it back the way you had it in your back, if you know what I'm saying. Who threw that? There's a drink on the ground. Someone threw a bath bomb on the floor. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Whitney, I was the one who was supposed to throw bath bombs. I have not anything but call you a villain, which I stand by. <laughs> um. So Lisa's like, I'll be your villain. Bet you want a villain? I'll be your new villain. You need a new villain? Here I am. 
Lisa, I am not a liar. Do not come after my character. I have never lied. And Heather's like, ha, 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 Whitney. You accused me of lying about my, oh, no. You lied about my book. You lied about me uh, not getting approval for my book. Meredith. You accused me of lying about my father's memorial, which is very hurtful. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. I was trying to kick off that time machine again. Well, that was the most hurtful thing a friend has ever done to me, aside from stealing a bath bomb idea. You accused me of writing an unauthorized biography and you accuse mary of running a cult and being a predator <laughs> okay you guys are ganging up you're ganging up it's not right right now this is not nice i have a daughter you accuse everyone in our core group of having affairs when only three out of four of us were you chased me out of a bar screaming you exploited my vagina resolve it and so everybody just starts squawking at whitney about what an asshole she is literally not stopping and whitney just rolls her eyes <laughs> and then heather goes yeah and that makes you a liar because you liar lie. liar Receive liar proof. Timeline. Okay, Heather, give it a rest. Jesus. Why are you all choosing to pick on me? Childhood trauma. Well, you do it over and over and over again. You guys. And there's always an excuse. It feels like a lot. Electra is nearby and she might be able to hear this. <laughs> Lisa, I would love to take accountability um, for something that I haven't taken accountability for yet. Because this other stuff is like years ago. Like, what? How about take accountability for the podcast? I gave you grace. Yeah, but I don't understand what your grace looks like. Because in your relationships, your grace doesn't look the same. So I don't understand what it looks Are you going to apologize or not? <laughs> Whitney is pretty good at default. I mean, Whitney's an idiot, but she's very smart at manipulation, I have to say. I feel like in your healing journey, you feel like you're superior to me, but I, I'm just me. I'm just the woman who birthed a boy who found a Michelin restaurant in Bogota. And if you like me, you'll accept me for being me. But I'm not the same on the same journey as you. Hashtag Besos. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe you should be on the same journey as me because now you're using my trauma against me. Ow, I'm traumatized. Ow, trauma. I would never do that. Ow, uh, trauma. Uh, trauma. Uh, I have children. Uh, I have children. Uh, not near Electra. <laughs> I would never weaponize your trauma. I've got enough of my own trauma. I went to the frosty place and they were out of the chocolate. <sighs> no, you weaponized my trauma against me. In text messages, you said, keep healing. You want, you want... You want to meet Hild Whitney? Well, fuck you, Lisa Barlow. You used my trauma against me because you said to Hill. Well, there's the door, Shannon. The door, you can leave my party. Bye. I'm going home to my beautiful new house and my children. Oh, yeah. Well, she said, F you at my party. Why would I want her to stay? She said, F you at my party. I have children. I will not be called a liar, and I will not allow you to use my trauma against me. Well, you stole a bath bomb, so that's the least <laughs> of my issues. <laughs> You're spending dust. You're spending dust. You're spending dust. No, we're not going back in time. We're staying present. Because this is Hild Whitney. I'm strong. I can stand up for myself. I don't need you, so... Bye. <laughs> Wait a minute. You can't use your trauma against us. Ow, oh, that was so manipulative. You used your trauma against me. I have a child. By the way, Angie can leave with her because she's clearly involved. So, Angie, you go too. And Heather's like, oh my god, but Angie, Angie's my girl. <laughs> Thanks for that uh, totally natural line reading there, Heather. So Lisa's like, well, she's clearly Angie's girl. Heather, I mean, Whitney is. Well, guess what? You misread that one, honey. <laughs> Bezos. Wow. And then we see a coming to season on The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Receipts. Proof. Timeline. Now, if you want that trailer that ends this episode, if you want to hear our trailer trash of that, that's actually on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash watch what happens. But wow, I am exhausted. Maybe it's the fifth cup of coffee I've had today because we've done so much podcast. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Amazon. Thank you, House of Bezos, for letting us talk yeah. about Bezos. Um, I'm glad this is a soundproof studio because it's horrifying to think we were just making all this noise and, and acting like this was so fun. And in the middle well, of we a are in a podcast studio. Well, we're in a podcast studio. That's what people do. 
do here? We're you know just what? one what of them. Do? Okay. You know we're what? We're here at Wondering. We're doing what we do. You know what? You know what? No one's does. wondering what we're doing in here. That's for sure. You know what? <laughs> Isn't it sometimes funny to think about the time that Travis Kelsey was on Watch what Happens Live? The other guest was Ramona Singer. What sort of world is this? I love Bravo. Wait, that happened? Yes. Ramona Singer happen? always supposed to post. They're just, you know, like, it's just classic Watch what Happens Live. It was like, he loves to play football and she loves to... Rubber foot on ball. It's, it's Travis so Kelsey and Ramona Singer. They were on at the same time. Whoa, that the you know what? <laughs> I just want you to know I love black people. You're great. <laughs> I love your sitcom. I think it's time that we have more psychiatrists on comedies. <laughs> no, it's not Kelsey Grammer. It's Travis Kelsey. I know. I just want to say, I don't think Lily was ever right for you in the first place. I think the lady's fun is too tight. Maybe you need someone who's ready for a real man. <laughs> I don't know what people confuse you for Andy McDowell. You look totally different. No, not Nancy Travis. Travis Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> that is a real thing that happened. Anyway, everyone, thank you so much for being here for premiere day this was so fun and we will catch you later this week for more orange county bye, bye.